G'day everyone, Mike Beery here today. I'm taking you to the golf course and I'm taking you to one of my practice sessions. It's a technical practice putting session today. So let's just get to the golf course. <laughs> Okay guys, so we have made it out to Hackberry Creek. It is a hot day, I've been out of the car for about 10 minutes. I think it's like 97, feels like 103, which is just a typical Texas summer day here. Actually, it's probably a little cooler than normal. Either way, it's pretty toasty. So what do we have in store for us today? Well, it's a technical session as we know. This would typically take around 20 minutes to complete. We're gonna be looking at contact, we're gonna be looking at path, face, we're going to be looking at start line control. That's going to be the focus of today's session. It's really a technical session, not so much skill focus, which I would consider putting accuracy and speed. And we'll do a video on that coming up very shortly. Now, the average session for this type of routine would be around 20 minutes, but there are times where you might be able to get that down a little shorter, in particular, if you're doing this more frequently. Now, today, it's gonna to be a little bit of a work session for me. I need the work, but sometimes this is purely just gonna be maintenance work, just making sure that things like contact and path, face, etc., don't drop off. And in those cases, it's typically more like a 10 to 15 minute session. Generally speaking, when it comes to technical sessions, I like to keep them as short as possible. I'd prefer to spend more time working on the skill side of things, so putting speed, putting accuracy, and that sort of thing, as opposed to grinding over the stroke for long periods of time. Like I said, technical work with putting, try and keep it to just enough. The first thing we're gonna do here is find a straight putt. I typically do my technical work from about six feet away on straight uphill putts. I do 10% of my technical work on breaking putts and I normally use a string line for that that I'll introduce to you while we do this. But I typically do more of the breaking stuff during that skill training session. So normally the first thing I'll try and do is find the straight putt. Once I've located what looks to me like the straight putt, I'll throw the string line down and just roll a couple just to make sure that I am truly on a pretty straight putt. By the way, making these string lines is super easy. This is a couple of meat skewers from Walmart that I cut down. It's some stretchy string elastic that again, I just kind of made to size and you know, it cost me like two, three bucks to make this total piece of cake. Now the first drill that we're going to do here is a contact drill. It's very easy. It's a gate drill. We're going to put two tees just outside the width of the putter and we're going to make a few practice strokes back and through making sure that the putter returns without hitting either of the tees. I'm not focused on trying to avoid the tees or make it go through. I'm just using that for feedback. Obviously if I hit the outside tee that's going to be a toe strike. If I hit the inside tee that's going to be a heel strike. And remember that contact that's going to affect both, both distance and direction. Now here's a quick pro tip. What I do is I put a little marker down with a sharpie where the golf ball needs to go because the ball's going to sit in front of the tees. The putter head sits inside of the tees. So to save myself fidgeting and getting that ball sitting off the center of the putter, I just put a little sharpie marker or you could make a little prick with a tee just so that you know where the golf ball goes. And you can putt from the exact same spot every time. Once I've done this for just a few minutes, then I actually drop to right hand only. Now, as you'll see as we go along here, I putt left hand low. The reasons for me doing that, we're not gonna dive too deeply into it, but to me, I just get set up a little better with my upper body left hand low. I kind of feel like I'm always struggling to get my shoulders and forearms square with a conventional putting grip. But what I will do with this gate drill is I'll do a right hand only putt. To me, I feel like I'm almost just stroking that right hand back and through towards the target. So even though I am left hand low, it does feel like a little more right hand dominance to me in the stroke. Okay, so now that we have the contact under control, we've done some good work on that, it's time to work a little bit on path. 
So for me, I tend to take it away a little too much to the inside at times. So the drill that I have here, I've got a couple of alignment sticks down just to make a little bit of a channel. Now, it might look like I'm suggesting a straight back, straight through putting style, and I'm not suggesting that at all. I think that the putter does need to arc. It's swinging around our body. A putt of this length, there's not gonna be a lot of arc to the stroke. So for me, given that I take it away a little too much to the inside, I've got a T placed on the inside of these alignment sticks or this channel, so that if I do happen to draw it back too much to the inside, I'm gonna hit that T. Now, if you happen to take it too much to the outside, you just flip that T that's in the backswing on the other side. So after I've done some work on that path, it's time to then work a little bit on the face, which obviously is critical to get that ball started online. So I'm just gonna put a ball gate, it's about 18 inches or so, in front of where I'm gonna strike the putt, maybe a smidge further, 24 inches is probably fine. Beyond that, it's a little too far away, there's opportunity for it to deflect or be deviated by imperfections in the green. We want really good feedback when we do this. If we do it right, it needs to be because you did it right. And if the feedback is that we didn't do it correctly, it needs to be because we didn't do it correctly, not because of an external influence. So all I've done here is placed a ball down that target line about 24 inches, just so that I can measure off the two tees that I wanna put in the ground. And just a little bit of room either side. Don't give yourself too much room. It needs to fit, but if you make it too wide, that ball's gonna start off line, and that's not the feedback that we're looking for during this drill. So this now is excellent feedback on path and face control. And if we're doing this well, the likelihood is we're gonna make a lot of short putts. Okay, so we're all done with the technical practice side of things, and I'm pretty happy with how that session went. The putter's actually feeling really nice. Now it's time to move into the competitive part. This is where I set myself a challenge. If I happen to complete this particular challenge, I get to buy myself a nice refreshing mocha frappuccino at Starbucks. That sounds pretty good because it's 105 heat index right now. The challenge, I'm gonna hit from that same spot. I'm gonna remove the string line. It's certainly a lot easier to putt underneath that string line because you can almost guarantee that your alignment is good on every putt. I gotta make 10 in a row. If I can make 10 in a row, then it's time for Starbucks. And now this is gonna add that pressure element as well. So before when I was doing that technical work, wasn't a lot of pressure on, other than the fact that I just wanted to execute it well. But now there's a challenge and there's a reward and I really wanna achieve this. So now it's an opportunity for me to see if that technical work will stand up. And we have to apply pressure in able to get to the point where we can take this onto the course because here on the putting green, no real pressure. Get on that first hole, we've got a six footer for par or for birdie. There's a lot more pressure and the technical work needs to transfer. One thing I did forget to add is that if I get to that 10 minute mark and I'm still alive, then I can continue. If I do happen to miss and it's inside of 10 minutes, then I get to keep going. Once I hit that 10 minute mark, that's the deadline. If I miss, challenge is over. If I'm still alive, I've got that chance to get that reward.
Whew. Whoa. We did it just in the nick of time. That was not easy. I'll tell you what, the last thing that I had going through my mind on that last part, that 10th part was, no matter what, just don't get in your own way here. Don't overthink the stroke. Let it go. If it goes in, it goes in. If it misses, it misses. It went in. That means Starbucks for me. Starbucks, you guys wait here, be right back. That reward was worth the grind.